Good morning. And welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please take a moment to silence all electronic devices and let's stand and safely greet one another. All the readings for this Mass can be found on page 1239, page 1239 in your hymnal, and your music and readings can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you would like on the OSM Parish app, or click the Sunday worship aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Our gathering song is number 752, Come, You Thankful People, Come, hymn number 752. God's people, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, as we come together on this, the Lord's Day, we gather to offer a sacrifice of praise and worship to God, God who is our help, God who upholds our lives, God who gathers us. So as we begin, let us humbly acknowledge our need for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. Lord, show favor to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you are God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all. That you need show, that you need show you have, not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency. And with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds, that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope, that you would permit repentance for their sins. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what the intention of the Spirit because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then, at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and, and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds. Yet, when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said to the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then, dismissing the crowds, Jesus went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Jesus said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. 
Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't know if you're familiar with this story. I found it a number of years ago, um, especially here we are in the state of Illinois. It seems that in 1846, there was a radical religious leader in Sweden, his name Erik Janssen. He was able to convince 1,500 of his fervent disciples to emigrate with him to America to a place in Illinois called Bishop's Hill. Someone told me this morning that Bishop's Hill is now an artistic community. But back then, they planned to set up a Christian colony free from all the evils of the world. Jansen was rebelling against his own Swedish Lutheran roots, and he taught that those who believed his message were instantly set free from their sins, made perfect in God's eyes. Everyone else was doomed to hell. It's no surprise that this perfect community failed. Attempts at utopia or purer or more perfect Christianity are attempts that often are unrealistic. Yet down through the millennia, many, many have tried to find a Christian life that would be more free from the corruptions of the world. I think, with no offense to these groups, the Puritans, the Amish, the holiness movements, various fundamentalist groups, even in our own church, the followers of the Archbishop Lefebvre, the Lefebvreites. And this sort of thinking continues to happen now. People want to separate themselves. They want to protect their families, their children, from everything that they see as evil around them. You know, even those who are part of religious communities, like the Paulist Fathers, when they invite others discerning religious life into their uh, community in the Catholic Church, they have to help their prospects understand that they cannot escape from situations in their world or their lives. It's always going to be there. It's rather finding a way to move through that and live in the midst of that. The Christian life is certainly a call to holiness, but the church cannot set itself up for being some kind of elite or select club. Jesus, in another place, tells us that we are not of the world, but we are in the world. And each one of us has to understand that. As soon as we want a flawless garden, to borrow from the scripture, the weeds are going to find their way in. And it happens even within the church. I cannot help but think of the horrors of the sexual abuse scandal that was unleashed a number of years ago and that will remain with us. It's, it's horrific. And at the same time, we, we can also easily ostracize people, other individuals or groups, because we see them as a threat to our perfect Christianity. At one time, as you know, in church history, we even burned heretics. We would not do that today, thank God. We are called to live the gospel. We're called to grow, to grow in holiness. Yes, to address evil, because evil is harmful. It does abuse even to the innocent. But we have to be careful. We can't see ourselves as better than other people, always judging. God 
alone is the one who judges. And that's what is implied in this gospel reading. It is at the end of all time, when we stand before God in judgment, that the bad will be separated from the good. And I think this is where we also get all those images of the fiery hell, uh, you know, because the fires that will consume those who are evil. But even wisdom that we heard from this morning tells us that God's might is God's justice. God judges, though, with leniency and with mercy. God brings about goodness in very different ways than we sometimes think we can. God longs to draw us to a conversion of heart that we would know the divine goodness that is even part of us by our baptism. We need to pay attention to this parable of the wheat and the weeds that we hear today because we can too easily dismiss the potential in those we deem not good enough or those even whom we fear. God wants for our growth. What might appear as weeds might still mature might still show themselves to be as beautiful as God intends us all to be. I think God is like the best of parents. God wants the best for his children, even when there is so much that, does, that goes wrong, that's not right. God is patient with us. God is like a supervisor or a teacher who helps to train, to guide, to encourage those that others just may dismiss. I was thinking, even before we got the news this weekend about the death of uh, Tony Bennett, I was thinking about Father uh, Rudy Vorsek, who's now deceased, he was a Paulist, and he told the story that he went to school with Anthony de Benedetto. And he said that, you know, even when he was a kid, his classmates and others thought he would never amount to anything. Mm. Think about that. We all need humility. We all need wisdom. Think about all of the other people who look at us as church people. They sometimes see us as hypocritical that we're pointing fingers at others, refusing to be open to things that just are different. I've heard this. I've had people say to me, I don't need to go to church, please. It's, they're all hypocrites sitting in those pews. I say my prayers, I read the Bible, I help other people who are in need. My answer to that, wonderful, praise the Lord, that's great. But that doesn't make you a Christian. A Christian is someone willing to be part of the community, to struggle with the messiness of life and with one another, and to be there for one another. We are both saints and sinners sitting here today. We're going to sing a hymn as we prepare the altar for Eucharist today. Uh, it's an African-American spiritual. It's great. Plenty good room in my Father's kingdom. Plenty good room. God always has a place for those who are open to his love. We have to do our best to be a witness to our God, the God who is patient, compassionate, and who showed us the way, the truth, and the life in Jesus. The Christian life is an ongoing longing for God, an openness to grow. St. Paul says it today. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. We do not know how to pray, but the Spirit intercedes with inexpressible groanings. Is your prayer ever a groan? And God who searches the heart knows the mind, I would say the intention, of the Spirit. Left alone to our own human resources, as insightful as they often can be, we also find ourselves sometimes ineffective to do all that we would like to do. And St. Paul says that earlier in Romans, I do not do what I want to do, but what I hate. 
The desire to do what is right is there, but not the power. Well, we are given the power in the Holy Spirit. It's just a matter of taking time, opening ourselves, pausing to tap into that power, giving us a baptism. With God, all things are possible. With God's life, the kingdom has a potential to grow and to flourish even when things appear small or fledgling. And we always have to remember, God's kingdom is already among us because Jesus came, but it is also not yet. There's more still to come. As we leave today, we're going to sing another hymn uh, it's actually Methodist in its roots, written by Frederick Faber. And I think it has a powerful theology and it is a strong reminder. There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice, he goes on, which is more than liberty. There is a welcome for the sinner and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior. There is healing in his blood. So, unlike Eric Jansen or others who would want a more pristine, a more primitive, or more holy kind of Christianity, we, I think, need to pay attention to the gospel we heard we must seek the Holy Spirit to guide us, to allow us to be ever open to correction, to transformation, to conversion, so that we can be all that God knows we can be. We may not be perfect, but God is not finished with us yet. Every week on the Lord's Day, we always proclaim our faith. We use the Creed. Today, as we've been doing for weeks, we are using the Apostles' Creed, the older Creed. So we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With great confidence in the power of Christ Jesus and his Spirit to bring about healing and wholeness, let us pray for all who are in need. That we, the Church, will continue our efforts to strengthen the Kingdom of God, allowing patience for growth and discernment for addressing evil, suffering, poverty, and injustice, we pray that world and national leaders work diligently to end continued acts of gun violence and work together to uphold freedom and justice so that, war so that wars will end and human dignity be upheld. We pray that we might be more understanding of a world and church comprised of both saints and sinners, 
while also realistically addressing evil behavior that abuses or harms, we pray. That as the church commemorates the grandparents of Jesus on July 26th, the memorial of Saints Joaquin and Anne, we ask God's blessing upon all our grandparents, living and deceased, for they have been an important part of our lives and heritage. We pray that our awareness past this week, the anniversary of dedication of this old St. Mary's Church, may encourage us to offer hospitality and welcome to all who enter this holy, pray, holy place. We pray that those who are sick soon know healing and peace, and that those who suffer from addictions of any kind find strength for seeking help and the endurance to find their freedom, we pray. That Bishop John Manns and all of those who have died will be granted eternal rest with God in heaven, we pray. And for the special needs of Father Jack Tierney and all the intentions we hold in prayerful silence. We pray. O God of kindness and mercy, hear the prayers of your people this day. Open our hearts to respond to the action of your Holy Spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we take up the offering, uh, the sustenance of our parish here, we thank you for your support of all the ministries. Um, if you're joining us from home, uh, if you're homebound, don't forget to mail in your contributions to the parish office or even donate online by clicking on the Give button on the parish website, oldstmarys.com. As always, thank you, thank you. We need your support. Please join in singing hymn number 847, Plenty Good Room, hymn number 847.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable before our loving God and merciful Father. Trusting that there is plenty good room, we gather and pray. God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion in Christ Jesus, varied offerings, brought to completion the varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ Jesus our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For by your word you created the world, you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as our mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. Jesus is the way that leads us to you. He is the truth that sets us free. Jesus is the life that fills us with joy and gladness. Through your Son you gather those whom you made for the glory of your name, you gather us into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross, signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for all ages unending, with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy to be glorified, O God. You love the human race and always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Father most merciful, we pray, send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, he said the blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, gracious Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, 
He whom you led to his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have this sacred communion. By our partaking of this holy mystery, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the great bond of communion that we share with Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop, the entire order of bishops, the clergy, those in religious life, and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. And we pray in a special way this day for Father Jack Tierney of the Society of the Atonement, whatever his needs may be. Keep us all attentive to the needs of those who are in grief or pain, sharing their joy too and their hope that we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and walk with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us when this, our earthly pilgrimage, is done, that we may come to the eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the saints, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, the Glorious Martyrs, and with all of the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We turn to one another and offer some sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to life everlasting. Please join in singing hymn number 1046, From the Many Make Us One, hymn number 1046.
Graciously be present to your people, Lord. Lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. As we say every week, uh, thank you for joining us uh, and being here. For those who have still yet to join us in person but who can, we encourage you. It's so important for us to be in this together, to be a support for one another. Uh, for those who are homebound, know that our prayers are with you all the time. Uh, do take and read a copy of the week's bulletin. There's information also available at the parish website and the OSM parish app. Um, are there any visitors or newcomers with us today? Could you stand so that we could recognize you? Nice to have you. As we said earlier, um, we are keeping the International uh, Day for uh, Elderly and Grandparents that Pope Francis has encouraged, especially as we prepare to celebrate the feasts of Joachim and Anna, who are the grandparents of Jesus. Um, and be with that, uh, Mary Ellen tells me that there's going to be uh, an opportunity to gather to play bingo. I think that's what it is. And they're gathering in the room outside of the gymnasium. If you have some time and you'd like to just meet some other folks and come together for some fun, right here after Mass, they're going to be over there uh, playing bingo. Also, so, as we remember our uh, elderly, those people of wisdom that are around us, and especially grandparents, I, we have a special blessing for grandparents in particular. So will all those who are grandparents please stand. Now I know you get a special blessing on Mother's Day and Father's Day, but now we're giving you yet another one, so stay standing. Lord God, bless all grandparents with long life, with happiness, with health. May they remain constant in your love. May they continue to be living signs of your presence to their children and to their grandchildren. We thank you for the many ways they have shared the lived wisdom of their many years. Keep them safe from serious illness and harm. Allow them patience in the ways that life changes and bring them assistance and care for the time that they will have their greatest need. Allow them to rejoice in your guidance until that day of their fulfillment when they return to live with you forever in glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God be with you this day and always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in faith to truly live the gospel by our lives. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing number 755, There's a Whiteness in God's Mercy, number 755. 